for more on this story, we can bring in our international affairs editor, Angela Diffley. Angela, you heard there those sound bites from those people in Burkina Faso. Clearly, Thomas uh, Sankara impacted, his death impacted uh, the people. Yes, when he became president in 1984, he was 33. He was the youngest president of any African country. And of course, he was in power for such a short time. So all of this has contributed to uh, a sort of idolizing and making him an iconic figure amongst many people in Africa, particularly young people. He's seen as a kind of Che Guevara. He's, he was young, he was good looking, he was energetic, and he was cut down in his prime. He is a big pan-Africanist figure. He is known particularly for very fiery speeches at the United Nations. <clears throat> he lambasted Western institutions, said they were a form of neo-colonialism, and he encouraged other African countries not to repay their debts to Western countries. He said that that was simply a knowing way of excuse me, recolonizing Africa, reconquering Africa. So a big Pan-African figure. Mm. Within Burkina Faso, he intended to transform the country. He was very left-wing. He uh, wanted a pharmacy in every village. He introduced uh, some very pro-women reforms, which at the time were very forward-looking. He abolished forced marriage. He abolished female, female genital mutilation. Yeah. He introduced a lot of educational reforms. It's possible that had he lasted longer, he might have had a less rosy legacy amongst those who on the left idolized him. There were some signs of authoritarianism. There was a, a big demonstration against some of his reforms and thousands of people or hundreds of people were arrested. So he didn't appear to tolerate too much it's opposition. Sad. Absolutely. And uh, also there were some signs that perhaps there was a bit of jealousy amongst tribal leaders that might have caused him problems had he lasted longer. Now it's been 34 years since he was killed. How important is it that this trial is finally taking place? It's really important in Burkina Faso. For a long time, his name was taboo, and it was only after the departure of Blaise Campaori, who was forced out after an uprising in 2014, after he left power, the body was exhumed, it was found to be riddled with bullets, and there was a growing momentum behind finding out exactly what happened to Thomas Sankara. A lot of his supporters are very angry that Blaise Campaore, who denies all the charges, has refused to attend the trial. Mm. They hoped that perhaps uh, there might be demands for his extradition. That isn't going to happen. In Burkina Faso, they rely too much on relatively good relations with Côte d'Ivoire, where he is a citizen now, mm. and so so uh, they're not going to push for his extradition. It's very likely that whoever is found responsible behind this assassination might uh, benefit from an amnesty from the current president, Kadora, because he will be interested in national reconcili reconciliation, in national unity, and that's uh, quite a strong possibility. There are some amongst his supporters who suggest that a number of other African countries might have been involved in his uh, gunning down. Libya is mentioned, uh, Côte d'Ivoire as well. And some say he was a problem for France. He was very critical of France, which, of course, was the former colonial oh, yeah. power. And he's said to have irked François Mitterrand, who was president at the time. There was a push for papers to re be released, and uh, President Macron released three batches of papers from that era that were in the uh, archives. They haven't uh, revealed anything very significant. Uh, those who accuse France say there are probably more papers which he hasn't released. But in any case, today's trial is very much about those people within Burkina Faso who might be responsible. Indeed. Thank you very much for that, Angela. Angela Diffley there.